put in my brake cylinder in my right rear wheel in Miss Maisel. I have a 97 Ranger, it's a real simple job. The thing about this job is it's it's really easy. You only need a handful of tools, you'll see in a video. And I'm trying to do it with the most basic set of tools like anybody's gonna have. So I'm not gonna like take the wheel off with like impact guns or anything like that. Um, just real simple stuff and hopefully any, you know somebody can get inspired to go out there and work on their own car and not spend tons of money because we're in a economy now in a day and age where learning and doing it yourself and learning how to do things and saving money is the way to get by in this life nowadays I mean you know it's uh, it's always gonna be good and benefit you if you know how to fix things yourself and I'm here to show you the way okay. more complicated things that you know to do on your cars this is something that's pretty basic but can be intimidating like oh my brake cylinder like how do I do that you know cuz you actually got to take the wheel off take the drum apart and everything so a couple of things you're gonna need you'll see in the video and so let's get into it so we have to do the rear brake cylinder on this nasal and this is a pretty easy job. A couple of things you're gonna need if you're gonna do this yourself. Obviously a jack, a couple of jack stands, and essentially these are the tools you're gonna need to do this job. That's it. And then, you know, probably a hammer to knock the, the brake shoe apart, or the drum. And uh, that's about it. The only other thing you're gonna need is your lug wrench for your for your wheel. And um, that's pretty much it. 10 millimeter, 7 16 needle noses for the springs. Make sure you get a spring kit just in case you lose something or something breaks or whatever or is already missing. So get the spring kit. You're gonna need PB blaster. You're gonna wanna pre-soak everything the day before. Uh, brake cleaner and obviously brake fluid so you can uh, bleed the brakes when you're finished. And you know, cause you're gonna get air in them and that's why they're real squishy. So, and then you're gonna need your actual part that's bad, which is the cylinder. So, we're gonna put this in, and should be pretty easy, hopefully. So we encountered the first problem. I'm gonna have to go get my pipe to put on that because I don't have any leverage. Actually, I might be able to use... Nah, it's not gonna work. All right, I'm gonna have to go get a pipe or something so I can take them bolts off. They're super tight. See, hopefully we can get this in there, get some leverage. Let's see. Always keep a pipe in your car like this so you can get it over top of your lug wrench. Now I have air drills and sockets, but I'm trying to show you this to do it with the most simplest tools. A lot of people don't have access to those things. So I'm just doing it with the regular stuff the truck come with. So always get a pipe, just any pipe will do, just so, it'll, so you can get leverage. And don't jack the truck up first with the car. You wanna keep the wheel on the ground before you uh, loosen them. If you get it up in the air, the wheel's just gonna spin and spin. So little trade secret there now I have the front wheel chalked with a chalking block we're gonna do the other one too so keep some blocks of wood in your trucks guys always helps Jack stands underneath, lower it. Always use jack stands, don't rely on this. If you don't have, if you don't have a jack stand, forget about it. Some guys will tell you, oh, go ahead, it'll be fine. It's not gonna be fine. I've seen cars fall on people. It is not fun. The 
shake test. Shake test, good to go. Put these in your little custom Ford tray. Give your wheel a pop. Now, honestly, these drums are probably shot, but that's okay. Actually, look, I don't even have to hit it. I don't even have to hit it, guys. Come right off. So these are all the springs and everything. You're gonna wanna take a picture of this. So this cylinder expands outward like this and expands the shoes, these brake pads, against the drum like this. So you gotta take all that apart. So make sure you take pictures of your springs from the bottom and the top because it's very confusing. If you don't take a picture of it and you take this thing apart, chances are you're gonna forget how it goes. So I'm gonna take snap a few pictures and um, start taking it apart. It's really such a simple, easy job. Anybody can do this. I mean, anybody can do this. So let's do it. <clears throat> All right, so there's our cardboard. I'm just gonna start taking springs apart. The reason why I have safety glasses on is because <laughs> these springs like to fly and hit you directly in the face. And usually your eye is connected to your face. So, you know, I'd rather have my eye look like a goof or keep an eyeball. Up to you. I pick my eyeball. All right, so let's do it. That's why you need the pliers and a flat head. You can use a bigger one. I do have a bigger one in case things get a little squirrely. So these are basically all you need right here. Boom. And just start taking just start taking stuff apart. No. <laughs> you got one spring here. One spring. down on this and turn it and then the spring will come out and it's just like a little nail that's folded over it's kind of weird it's actually this jobber right here see that nail let me see if i can get this out I... there we go yeah you gotta kind of just turn it and it slides out of there then you pull the nail from the back so it like kind of goes in this little slot and then it turns and that's how it locks so don't want to lose that and there's two on each side so you gotta do the other one too oh actually just broke so i have a new one that's why you do it Pretty much it. You don't really need to. Take anything else off. I'm not even sure where that went. Here's your two bolts for. For your brake cylinder. And then there's your brake line. That goes in. Now just, just crack that open. You don't want to take that off yet. If your brake line starts spinning, you can break it. So just kind of crack that open. See if it comes loose. You can always do that after. 
should be just fine. We have it, we had it soaking for a while now. So hopefully it just comes right off, no issues. Oh, I got it. Ooh. That was starting to worry me because if that breaks, then you gotta replace the brake line. And uh, well, that's a whole nother mission in, in itself there. So next, I'm gonna go get a bucket or something because some of this is gonna drain out of here. And in a way, you're kind of flushing your brake system now too, because so that's that's good. You're obviously gonna have to bleed the brakes and and do that once you get this all finished, which we should be done pretty soon at this point. I mean, it's a really simple job. Let me go get a bucket. Okay, got a nice little pail. It's gonna flow all over the place. Uh, I'll put this here so it don't blow all over. Okay. So I guess we actually can take this brake line all the way out. Usually if the brake line starts to spin while you're doing this part, then you're gonna wanna take your cylinder out and hold it and do it. Because you don't want your brake line to spin. You want it to just come out freely. And also when you're done doing this part, you're going to want to clean those threads so you don't get any dirt or grime into your brake system because it'll just ruin your brake. It'll blow the seal in that cylinder. So that's why you have the cleaner. Oh, brake lines out. These two bolts right here are next. Zip those out of there. And we gotta figure out how to put that shoe drum back together. But shouldn't be too bad. We have pictures, we have YouTube. We'll be fine. And you see me basically do this with like pretty simple tools, 10 millimeter, 716, a couple of hammers, needle noses, I mean, just real simple, real simple, guys, a couple of bolts, and this thing should just pop right out of there, but it's, it's not, so we'll just give it a little, a couple little love taps, there we go. That's it. That is a bad brake cylinder. Just slide it back in, guys. Start. There you go. So, two 10 millimeters, put them back in. Thank Lee for this video. She's the one who talked me into actually doing it. She said, you should do a video on that. I'm like, eh, I don't know if too many people care, but you know, the point about it is really, it's not if people are gonna care about this truck in particular. It's more like, you know, you can do these simple little jobs like this. It's, you know, the newer cars are a lot easier in fact, like, you know, so it's not, the point is, don't get intimidated by this kind of stuff because it's it's really simple guys now you don't want to strip this so make sure you're putting this in straight make sure it's going in straight if it starts to tighten up if things are like I always have a rule if something's hard to put in it's not going in right like it's just giving you a hard time it's it's probably because you're putting it in wrong Everything should go in nice and easy. If it's not going in easy, you need to step back and do it again because it's supposed to go in easy. Now, I don't have time to do the other one, but I am going to do the other one too because I did buy two of these. So both, both wheels are going to be 
have brand new brakes and uh, this truck is just gonna go forever I think <laughs> you know I don't want to get rid of it but at the same time I think it's about time for a new vehicle new, new job new city new state new everything so start over fresh new truck and uh, now we can make videos on it right because I'm definitely gonna have something cool I think I've been eyeing up the, the uh, Toyota Tacoma TRD that's what I really want but man those things are pricey aren't they guys are like 40 grand yeah, we'll see maybe I'll just get the new Ranger the F-150 Maybe I'll get the same exact truck Wrangler Star got. <laughs> Since he likes to answer the phone so much. You know what I think West Coast guys, I think they generally just have phones, but they don't know how to use them. I think they just have them because they think they're cool or something. Not really not really sure, but here on the west, west, East Coast, which I guess I'm more of a Midwestern guy now, but um, you know, when people call, we answer. Oh, I'm just kidding. He's a busy man, I get it. I think that's going to be tight enough. I don't want to overdo it here. You can always, you can always go back and tighten it a little more later. All right. Now the fun part. <laughs> the brake shoe. All right, guys. So that concludes the brake video. Everything's all done. Wheels on. Everything works. I didn't get get a chance because it was getting time for me to get to work and everything was pressed for time. So, um, didn't get to finish the rest of the video, but you know, maybe we'll do a bleeding brakes video or something at another time, but everything's all installed and we're going to go take it for a little test run. Should be okay. Ugh, my little, got a couple minute break here. So I'm just going to run and get a coffee and that's it should be good to go um good old miss nasal okay let's take uh take it out for a little spin hopefully we have braking power Generally, you're gonna know pretty quick if your brakes are failing when you did your brakes. You're gonna hear something and the pads falling apart. We're stopping. It's a little bit squishy. I'm probably gonna need to bleed the brakes again. But other than that, pretty simple job, guys. So, hopefully, you enjoyed the video. Like I said, I, you know, maybe another time we'll show you bleeding brakes and. Yeah, simple job. Like, you know, just make sure you get that spring kit. Spring kit's pop was came in clutch because a couple of those springs were rusted out and broken. Uh, so that helps a lot to have that spring kit. And, you know, that's it. So like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. See you guys in the next one. Patreon link will be below. And I love you all.